welcome to mankind pharma limited q4 and fy24 earnings conference call as a reminder all participants lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is been recorded I now hand the conference over to Mr. Abhishek Agarwal from Mankind Pharma. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Abhishek. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. A very warm welcome to our Q4 and FY24 earnings conference call. On the today, on the call today, we have Mr. Rajiv Juneja, Vice Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Shikal Arora, Chief Executive Officer and Whole Time Director, Mr. Arjun Juneja, Chief Operating Officer. Dr. Sanjay Kaul, Chief Marketing Officer, Mr. Ashutosh Dhawan, Chief Financial Officer, and Mr. Prakash Agarwal, President Strategy. We will begin with opening remarks from Rajiv Juneja, providing an overview of the quarter and the fiscal year 2024, followed by detailed insights of the business performance from Mr. Shital Arora, and Mr. Ashutosh Dhawan will be sharing the key financial performance posts, which we will leave the forum open for Q&A. I hope by now you had access to the investor pack shared yesterday. And I'd like to reiterate that certain statements made during today's call may be forward-looking. A comprehensive disclaimer regarding the same is uploaded on our investor presentation and website, and press release already uploaded on our website. Now I would like to invite Rajiv sir to share his comments. Uh, thank you, Vishesh, and good afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome to our Q4 and uh, this year Q4 early call. I want to. Acknowledge that last week uh, we have celebrated our first year of listing, thanks to the unwavering trust and support of our share stakeholders. Mankind has swiftly risen to become. They are not audible. So can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear us? Okay. Additionally, during the year gone by, we have crossed the annual revenue milestone of 10,000 crores and doubled our revenue in five years, despite of multiple industry headwinds. This remarkable achievement is a testament of our unwavering passion and our firm commitment of serving mankind. Speaking of quality performance, we witnessed a strong. Quarter as our revenue increased by 19% year on year to rupees 2,441 crore. EBITDA grew significantly by 42% year on year to rupees 594 crore. The EBITDA margin over 24% and PAG grew by 62% year on year to rupees 477 crore. On an annual basis as well, the company reported a strong revenue growth of 18%, increasing the revenue to rupees 10,335 crore. EBITDA increased to rupees 2,550 crore, up by 33%, and PAT grew to 1,942 crore, crore rupees, up by 48%, primarily driven by robust growth in modern trade hospital sales, and expansion in chronic share by 160 bips year on year to 36%. We have also performed the IPM chronic by 1.4x and CVM IPM chronic by 1.7x. With a strong net cash deposit, net cash position of rupees 3,260 crore rupees, we are consistently evaluating uh, multiple opportunities with a high entry barrier to enhance our presence in chronic, consumer, and other healthcare adjacent fields. With, with our commitment to provide international quality uh, healthcare products to every citizen of the country, we have recently entered into an in licensing agreement with AstraZeneca for their world class brand, Cindy Cot. Uh, in recent years, developing nations have experienced a notable rise in 
the number of individuals suffering from asthma and COPD condition, condition largely attributed to swift industrial growth and substandard air quality. Presently, India accounts for approximately 13% of worldwide asthma cases, impacting individuals of all ages, thereby necessitating superior quality products to tackle this health care challenge. Symbicot is a dual combination inhaler brand known globally for its higher efficacy used for the treatment of asthma. We aim to grow this brand by leveraging our extensive field port and strong doctor's reach. On the operational front, we have adopted various digital and technology-led business transformation initiatives. These initiatives are aimed, aimed at improving automation and digitization of processes across functions to further enhance our operational productivity and efficacy, which has also resulted into reduction in our working capital from 45 days in March 23 to 42 days in March 24. Further, we are revamping the packaging of all of our products to enhance customer experience and create better consumer awareness. In financial year 24, the consumer healthcare segment grew by 2% year on year due to multiple business transformation initiatives undertaken during the year, while secondary sales were healthy. We are now observing a robust uh, in primary sales, robust growth in primary sales, instilling confidence that this segment will re resume its past growth trajectory. Recently, we have carved out our OTC business into a new legal entity as a wholly owned subsidiary of mankind. This strategic move aims to sharpen our focus on this division and maximize its potential. On the R&D front, our focus remains at developing differentiated products to cater to the unmet needs of the patients. I would like to conclude my, uh, by expressing my heartfelt appreciation to all of our shareholders for placing their trust in us. With this, I will hand over to Sheetal, who will provide more details in our business performance. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Today, I will be providing key insights into our quarterly and annual business performance. Let's begin with our performance for the quarter. In this quarter, our domestic business revenue rose to 2,174 crore, marking a 10% increase. This growth was driven primarily by strong performance in our chronic segment and recovery in the gynecology segment. According to IQVIA, our secondary sales grew by 8%, outperforming the Indian pharmaceutical market by 1.4 times. Our chronic segment growth was notable at 16%, surpassing the IPM chronic growth by 1.6 times. This robust performance has led to an increase in our chronic market share to 37.4%. Significant contribution came from our cardiac and anti-diabetic segment, which registered impressive growth rate of 21% and 18% respectively. These segments outperformed their IPM counterpart by 1.9 times and 2.6 times, achieving all-time high market share in their respective therapies. I would also like to highlight that our insulin brand, Noviglar, has been recognized as a launch of the year in the anti-diabetic category. Despite a modest 4% growth in our acute segment, we still managed to outperform the IPM acute growth by 1.2 times. Additionally, Adjusting for the impact of a regulatory change affecting one of our products, our growth in acute segment would have been even more impressive, exceeding IPM acute growth by 1.3 times. Starting with our consumer healthcare business, we achieved a revenue of Rs. 156 crore, marking a modest year on year growth of 3%. We have observed some recovery in this quarter and are projecting mid-team growth for financial year 25. We have strengthened our portfolio with strategic product launches including Ova News, 
which leverages the Pregali brand to detect menstrual cycles. In our international business, we saw a significant growth in quarterly revenue, profiled by one of opportunities in the US and selective product launches over the past 12 to 8 months. Turning to our annual performance, our domestic revenue climbed to 9,522 crore rupees, up by 13% from last year. With secondary sales growing 8.5% compared to 7.6% IT growth. Despite one of the youngest companies in our sector, we have scaled our brand remarkably quickly. This year, we added three new brand families to 100 crore category, bringing the total to 23. We are confident that we will continue to outperform IPM by 1.3 to 1.4 times. We have also received the British Safety Council Certificate for one of our facilities, reaffirming our commitment to providing globally acclaimed quality products. Also in previous quarters, we have outlined a detailed roadmap of EAG towards increasing our sustainable footprint aligned with UNSDG. It gives me immense pleasure to share with you all that during the year. We achieved a remarkable milestone towards being plastic neutral as we have successfully collected 100% post-consumer plastic waste and sent for recycling. Additionally, we have reduced our carbon emissions significantly by 85% as compared to financial year 23. We are dedicated to contributing to a healthier Bharat by making market disruptors and setting ourselves apart from the competition. I will now hand over to Mr. Ashutosh who will provide more details on our financial, financial performance. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shitosh, sir. A very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks, thanks, thank you for taking our time to join our quarter four and financial year 24 earnings call. Today, I will be sharing detailed insight on our financial performance, both for the fourth quarter and the full fiscal FI24. In quarter four FI24, our revenue from operations increased to rupees 2,441 crores as compared to 2,053 crores in quarter four FI23, signifying a healthy growth of 18.9% year on year basis. For FI2024, our revenue has grown by 18.1% year on year to Rs. 10,335 crores versus Rs. 8,749 crores in financial year 2023. The gross margins of the company has increased by 2.6% year on year to 69.8% in quarter 4 FI24 as compared to 67.2% in quarter 4 last year. This increase is primarily due to three sectors. Firstly, it's a full year price increase has provided a benefit of 1.4%. Secondly, the favorable sales mix has contributed 60 basis points to the gross margin. And thirdly, last year we had inventory-related write-offs and approval towards COVID product, which compressed quarter four FI23 gross margins by 60 basis points, which has normalized in this year. For the full year, the gross margin increased by 2.2% year-on-year basis to 68.9% as compared to 66.7% in financial year 2023. This is majorly on account of favorable sales mix, including increase in chronic share and the price increase impact as, as we highlighted before. During the quarter, EBITDA increased significantly by 42% year-on-year to Rs. 594 crores as compared to That gives uh, confidence to us. I mean, we are so confident that this could do very, very good. A number of platforms, we have said that this particular division is closer to our heart, very close, because this has given mankind a lot of name and fame. This and will do very good. From a profitability perspective, would the consumer healthcare business margins be lower than corporate average? Would that be a right assumption? And as that ramps up, probably that margin gap narrows? 
Yeah, yeah. You, uh, if you compare it, uh, the EBITDA margins as compared to the company average, yes, they are lower than the company average. Having said that, there is a potential to to match up to the company level in the near future for this business. Okay. Uh, and the second question is on the uh, you know exports number. Uh, you know, if I were to just look at the launches that you have done in the US and the IQVR data, is it fair to assume that all of the incremental growth that we've seen in FI24 has been driven by the US market? Or at least bulk of the incremental growth in your own year in FI24 is the US? Just trying to understand the US, non-US mix in that number. So, so if you were to just talk about the export uh, numbers, the incremental growth is majorly from the US market. In but just to add, uh, the ROW business has also grown, and yeah. uh, US business, within the US business, the base business is growing quarter on quarter every quarter. So that's the comfort yeah. you can draw. Yeah. And uh, if that is the case, you know, if bulk of the, this one has come from the US, wouldn't the margins, EBITDA margins be higher because there's not too much fixed, you know, uh, uh, cost that is sitting below gross margins, right, for that US growth? So I didn't quite understand the reason why their margins are similar to our corporate average. I mean, because there are certain products which are OSD products, you know, where uh, there is significant competition. So that's why, and there is a certain one-off product which is able to compensate for that. So that's why we are saying that the margins are more or less similar. Got it. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rashmi Shetty from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just uh, again in the export business, uh, you know, uh, do you think or foresee any competition for your one-off product uh, in the coming year? You know, it's a very good question. It's very difficult, you know, to foresee competition because it's a generic product. It's not a patented or a para for kind of a product. So, I mean, we can't say that there will be no competition, but uh, it would be safe to assume that competition can come in any time. We can't predict when. Okay, got it. And the second question is related time, to that? But at the same time, we need to understand that the base business in the U.S. is growing. So even if the competition comes in, uh, uh, there will be some impact on the growth in the U.S. business, but that will get compensated by the growth of the base business and certain new launches that will happen. Okay. So the mix of U.S. versus rest of the world, it is more skewed towards the U.S. Uh, in uh, FI24. But uh, in FI25, you think that the rest of the world market will also pick up or it will be still... Uh, the contribution from the U.S. will be still higher? The contribution from the U.S. will be still higher, but uh, the growth from uh, rest of the world would increase. So it would be safe to assume that uh, uh, the contribution from rest of the world would increase, but uh, U.S. would still be significant. Perfect. And sir, on diabetes, sir, on uh, uh, utilization capacity, if you can comment on that, and uh, how the demand is picking up for the product in India market, and uh, what is your, uh, you know, uh, what are your views or, uh, you know, if you can comment on the export market also, if you're planning to do that. So I'll answer for the plant first. So the plant was started uh, last year. We started in September of the time frame. And uh, the demand is fully serviced from this plant where we have reached, you know, capacity about 60% or so uh, utilization. In terms of exports, we are in the process of filing this product in different markets, uh, which, I mean, uh, approval will take about a couple of years before we start selling them commercially. So, yes, uh, the plant is still underutilized and there is enough capacity to solve for the export market as well as the domestic market. Okay, sir. And uh, one more question, uh, if I may. Uh, the fundraising of 7,500 crores, you know, which the board has approved, uh, in inorganic opportunity, you are eyeing, uh, you know, in case if it is yes, you know, anything is on cars or uh, you are just looking at it and, you know, what kind of size of acquisition you are looking at it, uh, you know, if you can comment on that, uh, it would be helpful. See, the news has come with just a market speculation. The same we have played to sell you also yesterday by giving a letter. And okay. by saying that we, we doesn't mean that 
कि वी आर एक्सप्लोरिंग अपॉर्चुनिटीज इन मार्केट फॉर मर्ज एंड एक्विजिशन वी विल डेफिनेटली लुकिंग फॉर द एक्विजिशन बट वन द राइट टाइम एंड राइट अपॉर्चुनिटी विल कम डेफिनेटली विल गो फॉर इट राइट नाउ इट्स जस्ट अ स्पेकुलेशन इन द मार्केट ओके सर थैंक यू डॉक्टर शर्मा सर थैंक यू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ अतुल मेहरा from motilal oswal asset management please go ahead yeah hi sir uh, good afternoon and thank you for the opportunity so just to follow up on the previous little loud your voice is not clear uh is it better now yeah better uh yes sir so basically we are just on this uh, enabling resolution of 7500 crores so uh, so normally like uh, if you have a specific if you put out this specific number of 7500 crores Uh, it is implied that uh, there is some calculation that is wrong behind this number. Uh, maybe you are eyeing a particular target, which is uh, in final stages of negotiation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, can you just uh, basically walk us through uh, what is the thought process of this enabling resolution of 7,500 crores? Yeah. So, the way to look at is that we already had a resolution for uh, investment in investments of about 10 and a half thousand crores. in that so we raised first of all the debt resolution from 10 and a half to 12 and a half thousand crores and then in addition that we have added an enabling resolution for 7 and a half thousand crores so we want to keep the watchers ready this uh, as uh, shikal ji mentioned uh, if there is an asset that will come to us we will uh, evaluate big and small assets so in the past you have seen we have uh, acquired a large acquisition of uh, panisha but we also looked at some very small but very strategic acquisition like uh, daffy which is working very well uh, from the hill uh, which is for respiratory that is working very well so this is more like a blanket approval in admin resolution which will help us to be ready for any big and small acquisition right correct sir so then one small follow up on that So I think in the past, uh, the largest acquisition that we have done is about say 1600 odd crores. So is there a time limit to the kind of acquisition that we might do in the future? Like uh, any particular number beyond which you would uh, not go ahead and uh, like the size would be too big for us to absorb? Uh, is there a outer limit to the uh, acquisition size that uh, we can uh, go ahead with? So, yeah, so as we mentioned that uh, it's a mix of both. So it's a mix of debt as well as the the equity, and it's a, it's an enabling uh, resolution which has been passed. The thought process is that not to over leverage the balance sheet of the company. It should be the right mix of debt and equity. So that's how uh, it should be perceived in that spirit and perspective. Right. Let me add something here. I mean. See, uh, whenever uh, mankind uh, has any time in the past promised, what we have said that that we are in lookout for certain entities, but again, very wisely towards chronic side, towards uh, consumer side, towards certain things which can really add value to mankind for our future growth and uh, uh, making sure that these products or these entities should have high entry barriers. But at no given time, we are in a haste. It's like industry practice. Many, many pharma companies does the same. They basically even create some kind of a watcher. Some and take certain permissions. So we are just learning the tricks from those people. So that any time anything comes, okay, fine, we are ready for that. We don't come back again and speak about these things. That's one reason. I mean, this is the first year of mankind, and we see a lot of IPO companies how they practice. So we keep learning from these companies. That's the only thing. No haste, no hurry. Any time, but we should have got our investors' faith in mankind. I think we take a point, sir. Just, just as in uh, so normally, what happens is companies uh, basically most companies they tend to have like a uh, bite size of how big an acquisition that they are uh, able to do. So, you know, from that perspective, I was checking that is there an outer limit on, so for example, if you acquire something. Uh, if the entity maybe uh, it should be not more than eight thousand crores, ten thousand crores. Is there a limit to? Uh, Your audio uh, is not clear. No, I mean I I make sure you understand that. See, uh, Atul, there is no outer limit. It is always I mean it depends upon the opportunity. It can be I mean 
100 crore rupees opportunity it can be 1000 crore rupees opportunity but again mm. i mean anything and everything which would add some kind of a value to mankind mm. uh would give us a some kind of a product which is a anti barrier chronic side consumer side you can look out for that i mean uh, why should we put some kind of a limit i mean i mean this not a, sh- a kind of a shopping spree we are on mm. anything mm. right opportunity right for you see look look in the past Uh, Panacea is the biggest one. In the past, I mean, people forget Combi Hair, Daffy, and other products, which were very, very, I mean, uh, reasonably low price. And just to add the financial discipline, like Dr. Doji men- mentioned, so just to avoid over leverage, we have given the, you know, the enabling resolution for equity. So any given point of time, the debt to equity and debt to EBITDA ratios will be well within the limits. So that's the financial comfort we can give. Well, sir. Thank you very much, and wish you all the best. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. In order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all the participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up questions, we will request you to rejoin the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amay Chalke. from jm financial please go ahead yeah thank you for taking my question i want mean, to uh, congratulations to the management for good sort of like this the first question i have is on the new product launches uh, a growth contribution has been around 3% for last consecutive two years so is it possible for you to give more color on the new product launches in terms of therapies molecules etc and how it looks like for next one to two years And the second question I have on the pricing side, uh, we are already in May. Uh, I believe we must have taken pricing hike for this year. Or like uh, the last year, we understood that the raw material prices had gone up. The price hike component may have been on the higher side. So this year, the raw material prices have gone down significantly. So how does it look like for this year? The price uh, growth component for our business. Yeah, thank you. So, so uh, this is Sanjay. I'll uh, take one uh, uh, question first. The first question first. So, if you look at the uh, uh, new launches which you have planned, so uh, we uh, believe that three to point five to four percent contribution in growth is going to come from new products. We have some uh, big products uh, which have been launched or in the process of being launched. Nobiglar is one. uh that is an anti diabetic segment we have in uh, pain and analgesic uh, palmocoxid that is first of its kind uh, uh, analgesic uh, anti inflammatory analgesic uh, besides this uh, we have simbiclot which we believe is going to uh, is a big bet for us so uh, we have another product that is for uh, hemorrhage management that recently uh, was added in the uh, 50 crore bracket and uh, we believe these are the products which are going to be big bets for us uh, this is your uh, answer to your query for query number 1 second was uh, as per price increase last year because of wholesale price index we could leverage uh, uh, more than 5% of uh, 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 contribution coming from uh, price increase this year we believe the price increase component in overall growth is going to be between 4 to 5% but having said that you know we also need to understand that mankind's overall portfolio in price control is only 15% so if the inflation the wholesale price index doesn't go by that much it's not going to affect our price increase because the non schedule formulations we keep taking 10% price hike as and when the one year gets completed of that so there will be price increase more or less similar to last year it could be down by 1 odd percent but uh, would be more or less similar so thank you for taking the question thank you thank you the next question is from the line of harsh from bandhan amc please go ahead yeah thank you most of my questions are answered but if you could help us understand a uh, little bit more on panacea biotech the fy24 uh, uh, growth as the well last what is happening on the ground or uh, maybe some numbers as well so uh, whatever branch in the company we took from panacea 
everything is doing fantastic. I mean, growth in the vicinity of more than 25 percent plus. That's kind of a thing. The one product, Glyzid, has crossed 100 crore rupees sales. It has come in the group of 100 crore rupees. Fitcom is another brand which is for hemorrhoids. Uh, we back very heavy on that. That's a patent product as well. Uh, it all in all, uh, it is a very very successful acquisition. We're very very happy with the performance of all the all the brands of uh, Venetia. Even the transplant uh, division is also doing fantastic, which is very very niche. Uh, when we took Venetia, we asked ourselves, can we make this kind of a division? The answer was no, and that's one reason we went for this. So we are very very cognizant to the fact what we cannot build ourselves. Then only we look out. Otherwise, no. We have such a big field force. Any time uh, for a me to product or a simple product, you can go for it. Sanji also missed one thing that uh, the Shibikot is one product. This is the only uh, mankind is the only company to which AstraZeneca has given their global brand, Shibikot. That's the kind of the confidence we kept in us. Last last year it was. Uh, uh, Last year it was a different brand in license product. Naptas was there, and very soon we'll give you a news in the next quarter as well. One more in license will happen. So uh, people see us as a vibrant, aggressive company. That's one reason that we we'll keep giving you good news, news like this in future as well. Sure, and just to uh, sort of again bridge the gap between the FY25 margin guidance. Uh, uh, let's say even if your export sales, uh, because it is uh, 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 generics and uh, uh, heavy cyclically uh, dependent number, uh, let's say even if the numbers were to remain flattish, uh, we would still be able to achieve that threshold of 25 to 26 percent margin, uh, right? Because a lot of the levers that you might be building in might be uh, India driven to that extent. Yeah, I think the observation is correct. See, 90% plus business still domestic. If you see the growth uh, already highlighted is outperforming IPM by about 1.3x. So you'll definitely see a better growth and operating leverage to kick in through that. And that's why the margin guidance is one notch above versus what was given 24 to 26. Now it is 25 to 26. And the levers to that is higher chronic, so chronic as we know that we already see in a 160 basis point improvement, YOY, this will every year see some improvement, which is higher margin portfolio. You are seeing increase in number of 100 crore and 50 crore brands. So once it reaches a threshold of 50, 100 crore brand, the incremental effort is lesser, the productivity and profitability is better. Plus the third matrix, important matrix is MR productivity. So there also it has improved from 6.1 last year to now 6.5. And as we speak with higher growth, that matrix will continue to grow and that typically drops down to the EBITDA margin. So these are the three big levers in the domestic business, apart from the new launches, the in-licensing, etc., which will give a better flavor. And also the new divisions. I think like I think you asked about Tanesia. So apart from transplants, where it already, you know, access to new set of doctors, we have now recently launched our urology division. So it gives a set of new set of products, new set of doctors. So these are the new, you know, white spaces we are addressing, which will help us grow and eventually have better markets. Sure, Professor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitesh Dutt from Burman Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity and congrats again on a good set of numbers. Uh, I have a question on our manufacturing strategy. Uh, so uh, I think it was mentioned in the RHP that roughly 25% of our manufacturing is via contract manufacturers. So want to understand number one, uh, is it still at similar levels and do we want to maintain the mix or increase uh, outsourcing? And second, uh, is it split uh, amongst a, a lot of players, uh, so sort of fragmented uh, supply base or is it consolidated amongst a few large suppliers for us? Sir, correct. I mean, uh, our manufacturing strategy is still the same. More than 75% of our products are manufactured in-house, and we keep uh, continuing to shift the products from contract manufacturers as and when they become slightly big or meaningful to move them in-house. 
because of two three reasons we have a better control over the supply chain we have better control over the pricing of the product but having said that there will be you know uh, about 20 25% of our products which will continue to be manufactured at contract manufacturers because a we could Uh, might, we might not be having those manufacturing, those type of manufacturing facilities in house. We or we might not be having those kind of skill sets in house. But having said that, we ensure that the quality standards of these contract manufacturers are uh, at par with our uh, in house manufacturing facilities. We have a lot of uh, big contract manufacturers who manufacture for us, where the quality standards are as per Schedule M and WHO guidelines. Correct. So, how many partners could we typically have? It would be difficult to say right now. I don't have an exact number, but uh, there is a good set of partners that we have. Correct. Thanks. I'll come back and take. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tarang from Old Bridge Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hello. Hi. Good afternoon. And uh, you know, congrats on an extremely set of Q4 and full year numbers. Uh, I'm perhaps extending a line of questioning around capital allocation. You know, the business has about 3,000 crores cash in books. You know, going forward, what business segments and geographies could this and perhaps additional capital be put to use? Uh, you know, to grow your business from here on. And second, given the traction in the exports business, how serious are you to back this business? Would you be open to say an international acquisition? So I will answer the second question first on the export business. I mean, if you see our R&D expenses are about two two and a half percent of our revenues every year. If one were to really ramp up the export business, these R&D expenses need to go significantly up, as you must have seen in the books of our peers. So we've always maintained in the past that majority of the business, more than ninety percent or ninety percent of the business, would continue to be domestic. Export business would be less than 10% of the overall numbers of mankind, and we are not looking at any acquisition outside of India. Okay, and within India, I mean, overall, I mean, what business segments? What are the, uh, you know, uh, from a strategic standpoint, if you could give us some direction, would you want to probably move in towards therapies which increase chronic share in your business? Just some light. So, if you see overall, I mean, till about a few years back, mankind's covered market share was about 60 percent. But in the last few years, our our covered market share has increased from 67 at the time when we were IPOing, and now it is about 69 percent. So, we we have seen that there are white spaces in the portfolio which Prakash mentioned, which were in the field of. Uh, Neuropsychiatry, which we're trying to fill up, which was urology, which we're filled up now, which is nephrology, and there are certain oncology, critical care uh, products were there. So we're trying to fill up those white spaces and you know launching products uh, in those business segments. And the endeavor is to reach the covered market share of around 72 to 75 percent, where most of our peers are sitting. And one more point, if I may. So within the therapy like diabetes, we didn't have these insulin pens. So fiscal 24, we introduced the pen. So if you are present in therapy, but not the sub therapy, we are doing that also. So in respiratory, we were not there in inhalers. Now we are significantly present in inhalers. So that's also the white space within the therapy that we are expanding. Okay. Last, I mean, cross margin expansion has been pretty decent for FY24. Uh, do you do you intend for this to stay here, or do you think uh, probably cool off a bit? So if you see historically, our gross margins have increased year on year, barring couple of years where the raw material prices significantly went up. We are taking uh, price increases wherever possible. If you see, our price increases are also to the tune of four to five percent. So, if, I mean, we don't see any significant jump in the RM prices uh, over the next uh, couple of quarters. We so we see, uh, you know, uh, some jump in the gross margins uh, as you might have seen over the last couple of years. 
So no significant jump in our M prices for the next two quarters, and you'll continue to uh, take price increases where you can. Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal Dhamesha from Macquarie Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity again. Uh, so on the EBITDA margin, while we have given the guidance for the next year, but uh, let's say when we think uh, beyond FY25, um, I mean FY26, 27, how do you expect uh, our profitability to move, uh, you know, in the next three, four years? Uh, uh, some of our peers with a good chronic contribution uh, could be meaningfully, uh, you know, higher currently as compared to us. Do we aspire to be in that uh, you know, league where our EBITDA margin could be 35% plus, you know, five years down the line. So, uh, Kunal, I mean, if you see our chronic portfolio till about a few years back was around 30% or so. I mean, uh, there is significant uh, uh, work which is going on to improve our chronic share. Even the year we've seen our chronic share has gone up to 36%, and the chronic margins are definitely better than the acute margins. And uh, with the chronic share going up, uh, maybe in the near term to about 40%, in the long term to about 45-50%, we see improvement in the beta margins happening, and there will be operating leverage because of productivity increase that you're seeing, which is happening year on year. So definitely there's going to be improvement in the beta margins. But having said that, we should not just look at mankind with beta margin improvement. There's going to be uh, improvement in the beta margin, but we as a company would always want to go for growth and we will invest for growth. So there has to be a balance between investment into growth and uh, uh, EBITDA margins improvement uh, in a steady way. Sure. So uh, do we expect our uh, field force, etc., increase uh, at least in the next couple of years? And what is the current number? You see, I mean, uh, whenever we increase our field force, uh, it is always very balanced. I think uh, whichever therapy areas we are not there, we go for it. On the basis of that, we expect approximately, I mean, uh, 700 to 900 people can be increased this year as a whole. I'm saying as a whole, I mean, not immediately, uh, in different uh, quarters. Sure, sure. And, and what is the current number, sir? Again, again, not to forget that whenever we increase, we make sure one thing that uh, the productivity at no uh, point should go down. I look at last year productivity, is, but it was 6.5 versus last last year it was 6.1, despite of increasing field force. So we basically maintain this kind of a balance that uh, we should really increase uh, productivity, uh, this uh, number of people keeping productivity in mind as well, and the area of therapy in which we are not present. And to add to his point, in last 2019 till now, we have increased, increased 3,000 plus field force, but our total will be at one up in last three, four years. Mm -hmm. Correct. So far, it's 16,000, including the first line managers. Yeah. yeah. And without that, the pure MR number? From 12,000. Yeah, 12,000. 12,000. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you and all the best, sir. Thank you. Participant, please limit your questions to one per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we will request you to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Tushal Manudhani from Motila Loswal Financial Services. The participant got disconnected. Next question is from the line of Alankar Garudi from Kotak Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so historically, if we look at our track record uh, before Panisha, uh, we have always had a slightly conservative mindset when it comes to M&A. And uh, now uh, we believe that there is no outer limit for any potential acquisition. So it would be helpful if you can elaborate on what has uh, driven this change in approach. Yeah, you are absolutely right, being a company which has a conservative mindset, but after acquisition of Panisha, Biotech, and Daffy and Combi we have seen we have become very successful. And to because we have become very successful, so the right now the time has come that 
definitely we will go for a marginal acquisition and I mean, let me add on this. Uh, <coughs> one thing you must have seen that we are very, very conservative. So that DNA would never go away. One. Any time we think of any kind of a MMA, one thing is there in our head that it should really add value to mankind's product. It should not be just to add revenue. It should have some kind of entry barrier products. It should have chronic side. It should have consumer side. And whatever we have said in the past, whether it was consumer, chronic, whatever, you see the outcome is there in front of you. A few years back, two, three years back, every year we are adding one or one and a half percent share increase in our chronic side. Because we said that. We acquired those companies like that. So we are very, very strategical in this. It can be small, it can be big, uh, but depending upon the opportunity. Sometimes the opportunity is imminent. That's one reason. Again, we have taken inspiration from some of the pharma companies, which uh, just keep this watches ready so that you don't really end up wasting time. That's the only thing. We are not in a hurry. Uh, we'll not do something rash. We are always very cognizant of the fact that a lot of investors have I an mean, amazing faith in mankind. So that is really making us more responsible. That's uh, reassuring, sir. And maybe one uh, follow-up there is uh, any outer limit on uh, debt to equity or debt to EBITDA uh, when it comes to uh, any m &A? So, I mean, again, uh, I suppose you mentioned you uh, uh, will always make sure that uh, at no given time, the EBITDA of mankind is being affected by the interest. So, being a conservative company, will uh, make sure that it should always be 50-50, that sort of a thing. Yeah, I mean, in terms of numbers, uh, you know, we are talking about uh, debt to EBITDA of not exceeding around two, two and a half times. So that discipline, financial discipline will maintain. Understood. Understood. Thank, Thank you. you. And yeah, Sorry, sir, you were saying something. I missed that. <laughs> No, what, just to add to what Patarji has said, that we will be mindful in over leveraging to the to, to the sense that it should not impact the ratings uh, ratings of the company. So that financial strength should be maintained. So it's going to be a combination of cash on the books, the debt, and the equity. Fair enough, sir. Understood. Uh, thank you, and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Kadam from Canada Robeco Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, hi, sir. Uh, good afternoon. So my question is again in the extension of what Alankar asked. Uh, again on that particular uh, capital allocation strategy, uh, because this is something which we are really, <coughs> really curious about to know. Uh, the, the question is uh, on the payback side. So, assuming because we don't know the uh, kind of acquisition you desire to do, uh, there is because there is no outer limit. But, and also, you mentioned about the debt to EBITDA kind of thing, Prakash, Prakash just mentioned. But just wanted to understand, based on your previous acquisition, small and large, whatever, uh, what was the payback periods you usually target from such kind of acquisition? Uh, that was the uh, only question from my end. Yeah. Well, so we are commenting on one thing, which is, uh, you know, from a qualitative side, which is high entry barriers, synergistic benefits, as well as complementary, uh, catering to the white space that we discussed. On the quantitative side, we have talked about that we will not over leverage. We will maintain that debt to EBITDA and debt to equity ratio. Uh, from a, uh, other financial parameters, I think it's a combination of all these things put together uh, that will uh, lead to that decision. And there is nothing imminent. I think the street is reading too much into it. At uh, the right time and the right thing comes, then only we are going to take it. Otherwise, you know, uh, the financial discipline is very, very important for this company. Yeah, so basically that number we are not right now calling out. That's that's a fair assumption? Or sh should yeah, I mean, it depends on the asset, the size, the cash flows. I mean, there are multiple things. So nothing on uh, imminent, so we can't uh, call it out. Just to compliment what Kakashi has said, that uh, we, we are mindful that whatever the opportunities are there, it should not be a data dilutive, it should not be a return on capital employee dilutive. So those are the parameters we give very high weightage to while evaluating the assets. 
ओके दैट्स 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 ओके इन दैट एंड देन लेट मी लेट मी ऐड वन मोर थिंग लेट मी ऐड वन मोर थिंग दैट एज एज प्रकाश सेड दैट स्ट्रीट इज गेटिंग टू मच वी हैव नॉट गॉन फॉर एनीथिंग टिल नाउ I mean, sometimes uh, I mean there are lots of speculation in the market. I mean, TV starts reporting certain things, uh, and that really happens. I mean, that's just to create some kind of a buzz in the market for their own kind of a uh, reasons and benefits. We have not gone for anything. It has to be not. Yes, not. But that look at look at our current EBITDA of 2,500 to 3,000 odd crore. What we'll do, and then are mentioning that where our debt ceilings are in terms of EBITDA, to, uh, debt to EBITDA of two to 2.5 times. Uh, it just gives me a particular indication that debt requirement, if at all for an, any acquisition, shouldn't be more than five to six thousand odd crore. And then when we are taking such kind of enabling resolution of like. 12500 crore it just confused me and then along with it with equity when so all those things uh, and just on a sideline if there is something uh, news uh, uh, article has been floated it just confused the investors who wanted more clarity about how our capital allocation strategy because you also want, on one end says that uh, we are we don't want to go too much into export export should be less than 10% uh, where we usually those kind of acquisitions are as uh, as a heavy domestic side you usually are more on the acquisition of brands and etc which are like intangible so uh, then where the such kind of large enabling resolution was heading us to was late was a little confusion from the investors point of view but i guess i got part of my answers and then we'll just uh, take it later thanks thank you thank you the next question is from the line of Tushar Manudhani from Motilal Oswal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Are you audible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so, just on this uh, respiratory division, which was launched in 2021. So, uh, currently, how many MRs would be there? And it's heartening to note that uh, we've got this Simbicort in the portfolio. So, if you could just elaborate in terms of number of MRs and You know what kind of positioning uh, made you know AstraZeneca to have a deal with us? Thanks. So one point, respiratory is not a new division for us. We are top five player in respiratory. It's just that we are more on the oral solid side, uh, syrup side, where we have lot of cough syrups and you know other products. It's we were talking about the uh, new. Uh, chronic respiratory where apart from these products there are lot of chronic products and inhaler products that has been introduced uh, allergy products have been introduced so it's very difficult to call say that respiratory has this many ma we can uh, give you uh, on a one to one what is the new division of respiratory just give a number about i think it should be around 300 200 to 300 but we'll come back to you that's not a issue but let let's be clear that uh, the respiratory division was not 2021 it was the one of the chronic respiratory that came in 2020 i hope it's clear Yeah, got you. But even on the size wise, at least as far as the therapeutic composition is given in the presentation, respiratory is five percent of sales, domestic business, which comes to almost about five hundred crores, right? So is that the right way to understand respiratory? Nine. It is nine percent. Yeah. If you see the presentation, it is nine percent. Okay. Maybe color similar as well as pop colors. All right. All right. Thank you. That's it. That's it for me. Okay. Thank you. We can close the call. Yes, sir. Due to time constraint, that will be the last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much uh, for uh, all the questions and answers, and for your patient listening. uh thank you so much yeah if there any follow ups uh, you can reach to abhishek myself or ashutosh ji thank you so much thank you thank you on behalf of mankind pharma limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank you